Shalom, and in this teaching, we're going to be going through Matthew chapter 7. Now, this is going to be very exciting because Matthew chapter 7 is a very, very important uh, chapter, and it's got a lot of things, uh, a lot of good things that are said. Uh, It's quite interesting that a lot of people like to quote the first little part of Matthew chapter 7, but they forget about a section later on in Matthew chapter 7. We'll we'll get to that. Okay, so uh, verse 1. Don't judge so that you won't be judged. For with whatever judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with, with, with whatever measure you measure, it will be measured to you. Okay. Now, this is the, one of the favorite scriptures that a lot of sinners like to quote. Okay. Uh, the pe- people who are bound in sin, people who are not really walking out the w- life they should be walking out, they love to, to, to quote this verse. Judge not lest you be judged. And, uh, and so they like to quote it whenever you point. If someone comes up to them and you point out something in their life that needs to change or that is wrong, then they're like, judge not. No, we're not supposed to judge. No, we shouldn't judge. No, you know, it's not for us to judge. God will judge. All these kind of things. You know, Jesus said, judge not. What they miss is they miss a very important thing. Who was Jesus speaking to here? I mean, a lot of people don't even think about that. Who was Jesus speaking to? Okay. I mean, a few questions you need to ask. You need to ask, you know, many questions whenever you read a, um, a portion of Scripture. But at least ask, who is speaking here? We know it's Jesus. You know, it's the words in red. What is he saying? And to whom is he speaking? Okay. So he said, don't judge or else you'll be judged. For with for with whatever judgment you judge, okay, so you will judge. <laughs> you understand the context here. You know, everybody judges. You know, uh, you know. You look at somebody, you can say this person is, uh, you know, a Caucasian or this person is uh, an Asian. You're judging. You look at grass and you say it's green. You're judging it as green. Okay, that's a judgment. Okay, You're looking at the sky. Oh, it's cloudy today. That's a judgment. Everybody judges, okay? So, you know, this is what uh, Christians love to do. And this is what a lot of people love to do. They love to isolate one little passage or a few verses here, a few verses there out of the entire scope of Scripture. Outside of Scripture and outside of common sense, they like to isolate these things and then build their whole life upon it. So when Jesus said, don't judge or else you'll be judged, he's not talking about an absolute universal application of not judging. Otherwise, you'd die. I mean... If you were hungry, you got to judge yourself as being hungry or else you won't eat. And if you don't eat, you'll die. I mean, there's many different, it's just crazy. Everybody judges. Every single person in the world judges. I don't, it doesn't matter who they are. Okay. So the question is, what is Jesus talking about here? Whenever you read this verse, whenever you hear it being quoted, you have to fill in the blanks. Okay. Okay. Because, yeah, there are a lot of blanks here. Everybody judges. Everybody says something's wrong and something's right. Everybody says something is good and something's evil, something's black, something's white. Something is red, something's blue. Okay, so uh, you got to look at this and, and apply it with all of Scripture and apply common sense as well. Jesus said, don't judge so that you won't be judged. For with whatever judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with whatever measure you measure, it will be measured to you. So yes, you will judge and you will measure. Now, what Jesus is is saying here is that just be careful how you judge. But who is he speaking to? Verse 3, why do you see the speck? that is in your brother's eye, but you don't consider the beam that's in your own eye. Or or how will you tell your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and you know, you got a beam in your own eye, okay? You hypocrite, verse 5. You hypocrite. First remove the beam out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. So yeah, Jesus said, "Okay, you know what? Don't judge, or else you be, ju- or else you'll be judged. For whatever measure you measure, it will be measured back to you. 
um, what, uh, with whatever uh, judgment you judge, it will be judged back to you. So he didn't say what, you know that you'll never judge. He said with whatever judgment that you do judge. When you judge, you will judge. Uh, it will be measured back to you. Why? Because the people he was speaking to are hypocrites. Hypocrites. He said it in verse 5. You hypocrite. Now, you need to realize something. Whenever Jesus is talking to somebody, he's either talking to one group of people or only or another group of people. There's only really only two different groups of people, basically speaking, that Jesus is is, is addressing in in any circumstance. It's the people who are with him, people who believe in him and follow him and love him and obey him. Those people are his disciples and followers and such. The others are the hypocrites, the sinners that like to make themselves look better than they really are. They're dirty, filthy, stinking, rotten sinners, okay? So, but these people are hypocrites. So when Jesus said, don't judge or else you'll be judged for with, ever, for with whatever judgment you judge, you'll be judged, and whatever, well, excuse me, with whatever measure you measure, it will be measured back to you. He's speaking to the hypocrites. He's not talking to the believers. He's not talking to the follow, his followers. He's not talking to those who listen to him, love him, and obey him. He's talking to the hypocrite crowd, okay? Take it in context. So what is Jesus saying here? He said, you know, don't Try to remove the speck of sawdust out of your brother's eye when you've got a four by four beam on your own eye. Okay? So basically, what he says here is don't condemn people for doing the same things that you are doing. Okay? Let me say this again because it's so vital to understand so that you really understand what this scripture really means. Jesus said, don't, you know, paraphrased or summarized, Jesus said, don't condemn people for doing the same things that you are doing, okay? So, put it this way, um, is, it, is it wrong for you to say to a murderer that that, that that murderer is a murderer, that you can judge them as a murderer? Well, no, it's not wrong. But if you are a serial killer, okay, and you judge someone else, like you, let's say, for example, you know, if, if, for example, let's put it this way. If Hitler were to judge a person for killing somebody, that's basically what he's talking about here, okay? Don't judge somebody for doing something that you are doing, Okay? Verse 5, first remove the beam out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. So Yeshua made it very clear here. There is a time you can judge. Just make sure your eye is free from the same kind of sin that you're condemning someone else for. In other words, if you are if you are a murderer, don't con condemn others, someone else for being a murderer. You, I mean, you're a murderer yourself. You're condemning yourself, basically. You know, if you are a thief, don't con don't condemn don't condemn someone else for being a thief. If you're a thief, because you're a hypocrite, you'd be hip you'd be a hypocrite then. You're you know that's hypocritical. Oh, these thieves, you know they're they're terrible. They should all go to hell. Oh, if you're the biggest thief in the in the city, then who are you to speak? That's basically what Jesus is saying here. So he's not saying not to judge. He's just saying make sure that you are not doing the same things that you are condemning others for doing. Now, let's make it clear. Jesus never, ever even implied or insinuated or said anything about condemning people for doing what you used to do. If you have repented, if you used to be a thief, but you, now you're not. Now, you, I mean, you've restored as much as you can. You are... Uh, you know, you're repented, you are sorry, you've never stolen anything for, you know, for years, and you, you're you really a new person, you're really a different person, you've really, you know, you've really been uh, recreated. Uh, it, it, God really made a new person in, uh, of you. 
then yeah, you can look at somebody and say, yeah, you know, so and so, they're a thief. They're a thief. They should, you know, you know, they should pay for that. There's nothing wrong with that. You're judging someone else for being a thief. If you used to do it and now you've repented, it's okay to tell another person, hey, you're a thief. I know you're a thief. You can repent just like I did. You should repent. You should you should stop the evil that you're doing because it's evil. Repent. Let me help you repent, okay? There's nothing wrong with that because then you fall in the category of the last half of verse 5 where it says that you've already removed the beam out of your own eye. So then you can see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. So don't let anybody say, oh, don't judge me. If you are not presently doing that which you are condemning someone else for doing, okay? Or if you've never done it, <laughs> you know, don't, or you know, somebody might say, well, I, I might sin in another way, so I can't condemn this person for sinning in this way. Well, that's not really what Jesus is talking about here. Uh, although that could apply, I guess, in that, you know, to a certain degree and generally speaking. But I mean, if, you know, if, if you are, um, uh, if you are an unjust, you know, uh, boss, very unjust, then don't judge, uh, don't condemn another person for being an unjust boss. If you're very unjust yourself, first repent, first remove the beam out of your eye. After you've repented, you have all the right in the world to judge the other for doing the same things that you were doing. Okay, let me make it very clear what I said before. What Jesus is saying here is do not condemn someone for doing the same things that you are doing. He didn't say don't condemn someone for doing the same things that you used to do. No, because you used to do that's after you remove the beam. I mean, you've already removed the beam out of your eye. So he said, then you can see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Jesus made it clear. Verse six, don't give that which is holy to the dogs. Okay. Dogs here, uh, in context again, refers to the Gentiles, okay? Um, don't, don't give that which is holy to the, to the dogs, to the Gentiles, to those people who don't really want to hear the, the, the Word of God or the, to whom the Word of God doesn't really apply. Um, I mean, when Jesus was uh, approached by the, uh, the woman who was not a Jew... And the woman touched him, you know, or asked, asked him for uh, a miracle. And uh, he said, um, I don't give the children's bread, the children, the children of Israel, the bread, the blessings, the, you know, the blessings of God. I don't give them, don't get, I'm not going to give the children's bread to the dogs. Okay. So he was calling that woman a dog because she was a Gentile. Okay. Can you imagine today if a pastor or a bishop, a priest, or, or the pope or whoever called a woman a dog? I mean, what an uproar there would be. But Jesus did that. That's, that's, the, that's, what it, that's what happened, okay? He called a woman a dog because that's the way they looked at Gentiles, okay? Even today, there are some people that would also look at it in that way. But um, Jesus said, don't give that which is holy to the dogs. Neither throw your pearls before the pigs. Again, dogs, pigs... This whole phraseology comes out of the book of Enoch, which we know existed during the time of, of Mashiach, of, of Jesus, of Yeshua. We know that because we found the Dead Sea Scrolls. And also there's so many allusions to the book of Enoch and the, and the theology and the phraseology of the book of Enoch in the New Testament. So many. This is one. Dogs, pigs are actually referring to different races of Gentiles, okay? So don't give that which is holy to the dogs, neither throw your pearls before the pigs, lest perhaps they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So Jesus is just saying, the word of God comes to specific people. Don't give it to people to whom the word of God is not really meant for, okay? Or else they will just, they'll hate you for it and... and, and um, you know, destroy you, more or less. Um, verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. What you need to understand here in the original manuscripts, the, the original manuscripts written in Greek, there 
uh, the word ask, the word seek, and the word knock are in the Greek perfect tense, okay? In English, we got the past, present, and future tense. Well, the Greek has a, another tense that the English language does not have, and that is what they call the perfect tense, which means something that you do and can, you know, or something that is done and something that is continually being, you know, continually being done um, or continually being applied, okay? So when Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you, what he said, what it says in the original manuscripts is, ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking and it will be open for you. Verse 8, for everyone who asks receives. If you ask and you keep on asking, you're going to receive. He who seeks finds. He who, uh, to him who knocks, it will be opened. If you knock and 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 you keep on knocking, it's going to be open to you. Verse 9, or who is there among you who, if his son asked him for bread, will give him a stone? In other words, okay, we're not just talking about persistence in asking, seeking, and knocking, but we're also talking about now knowing and being confident that you will receive what you ask for, not something else, okay? So don't be afraid is basically what he's saying here. Uh, who is there among you? If his son asks for bread, you would give him a stone, okay? Or who... Uh, or if he asks for fish, we'll give him a serpent. If he asks you, uh, if you being evil, okay, if you being evil, speaking to evil people here, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Okay. Therefore, whatever you desire for men to do to you, you should also do to them the golden rule, they call it. The golden rule, do unto others as they would, as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets, okay? Now, a lot of people would say, especially Christians, especially Western, um, modern-day evangelical uh, Christians would say, well, well, you know, uh, we don't go by the law anymore. But... The golden rule still applies where you just, you know, uh, whatever you would have somebody do to you, do to them. Or whatever you do to somebody else, what you would have, what you would like to have done to you, okay? Um, Jesus said that is the law. That is, that that whole thing is a summary of what the law is. So to say you we don't go by the law, but, but yet we still go by the golden rule is contradictory here, okay? The golden rule is a summary or paraphrase of much of the Torah, okay? Verse 13, enter in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter in by it. How narrow is the gate, or in the TR, which is the Textus Receptus, more or less the King James Version says, because... So how or because narrow is the gate and restricted is the way that leads to life. I mean, that's just the, that's just the way that God made it. Few are those who find it. Oh, my, I tell you, how many people need to really meditate upon just these two verses? Because so many people... Uh, believe that everybody's going to heaven or that most people will go to heaven. Only just the real evil people will go to hell. That's not what Jesus said. You believe in Jesus? You believe that he taught the truth? This is what he taught. He said, enter in by the narrow gate for wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leads to destruction and many are those who enter in by it. Narrow is the gate and restricted is the way that leads to life Few are those who find it. Picture this. A huge, huge, massive highway. that you're, you know, It's so wide that you can't see how wide it is. Okay? You look to the, to the left, you look to the right, and it's, this highway is as wide as you can see. 
and people are on it. Billions of people are on it and they're moving forward, they're moving forward, they're moving forward, they're moving forward. And there is a down the road, which nobody sees until they actually get there because there's so many people pushing, pushing on, pushing on, pushing on. They're pushing one another. They're like part of the crowd, you know, pushing one another, pushing one another, pushing one another. You can't really stop. You can't really go back because of the crowd's just pushing you on, you know, gently but slowly pushing you on, pushing you on until you get to the very edge. And the, the edge is a cliff. And that cliff goes over into a fiery inferno. That is basically what we're talking about here when it when it, when it comes to the world and hell and when i'm talking about hell i'm talking about a place that you go to your spirit your soul goes to when you when you die uh, a place of eternal torment where you are for, tormented forever okay not just burned up and gone no tormented forever that's what the scriptures teach check out luke chapter 16 we'll get to that soon However, picture that, but picture this one little narrow path that comes up out of those people. It's one little narrow path. It's so narrow, you can't really carry anything on it. You can't really take anything with you. You're just going up this narrow path and few, there's billions of people on the way to destruction, on the way to hell, but just a few people trickling up to heaven. That's what Jesus is talking about here. That's what Jesus is talking about. He said many, when, when the Lord says many, I believe it's many. When he says few, I believe it's few, okay? He said many are on the wide path to destruction and few are going that narrow, straight and narrow way that leads to life. Straight, narrow, so straight, so narrow that it is restricted, the restricted way. Few are those who find it, he says. Wow, that should be a warning to each one of us. As Yeshua said, strive that you would enter the narrow gate. Okay, he didn't say, oh, take it easy. You got my love. You got my grace. All you got to do is just say this prayer and that's it. Ba -ba -boom. No, no, no. He said, strive that you enter. You know, be careful. He said to his disciples, his 12, his own 12 disciples that were with him, that were, you know, if there's anybody that's righteous, these people got to be righteous. And he said to them, pray, pray that you're able to stand in the day of judgment. Pray that you're able to stand before the Son of Man. If he has to ask, if he has to beg and, and command them to pray with urgency, warn them to pray that they'll be able to stand, how much more are we? Verse 15, beware of false prophets. Okay? Now, this reminds me of another thing, going back to the whole idea of judge not lest ye be judged, where some people think that Jesus means that, you know, you should judge no one. No one should judge anybody at all. Judgment, you know, you shouldn't, I mean, it's wrong to judge people. Well, you cannot obey Jesus without judging. You cannot obey Jesus without judging. Yes, you cannot do what he says without judging. So you can't take one little piece that he's, one little phrase that he says here and apply it so that it actually goes against everything else that he says. That's not the way he works. You know, he's not, he's not, he's not, he doesn't have multiple personalities here. Dissociative disorder, schizophrenia. He's not like that. Okay. He said, beware of false prophets who come in, who come to you in sheep's clothing, verse 15, but inwardly are ravening wolves by their fruits. You will know them. So he, he commanded his followers, his, his disciples, right after he told them not to judge, to beware of false prophets, to beware of wolves and sheep, sheep's clothing, to judge them by their fruits, okay? How can you pick out a false prophet without judging people, somebody as actually being a false prophet? How can you obey Jesus in be wearing, you know, uh, being aware or be, uh, you know, to beware of false prophets without actually passing the judgment on somebody that they are a false prophet, okay? So my point is this. You have to judge in order to obey Jesus. You cannot beware, you cannot beware of wolves in sheep's clothing if you never ever pass judgment upon somebody or if you never ever judge somebody as being a wolf in sheep's clothing. If you never ever think to yourself, oh, that's a wolf in sheep's clothing. If you never 
judge that person in your heart like that, you can never obey. You'll be the stupidest person. I mean, really, you'd be the stupidest person. By their fruits, you will know them. He said, basically here, this is like, he said, judge them by their fruits. Yes, judge them. Good fruit, bad fruit. Good fruit, bad fruit. You need to judge. You need to judge in order to actually be wise and to obey the Lord. Do you gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree produces good fruit, but the corrupt tree produces evil fruit. So there you go. I mean, you got to judge between what's corrupt and what's good. Oh, but Jesus said, judge not. <laughs> you know you know how to answer that, right? I mean, Jesus was talking to the hypocrites. He said to the people who have beams in their eyes, okay, get the beams out of your eyes first, then you can judge, Okay. If you've got a beam in your eye, don't, yeah, man, if you're a murderer, then don't judge someone else for being a murderer. If you're a thief, don't judge someone else for being a thief. I mean, if you take the Lord's name in vain, don't judge someone else for taking the Lord's name in vain. That's a hypocrite. Yeah, you'll be judged because you're judging someone else. But if you say, I used to take the Lord's name in vain, but I'm, a, I'm totally, a diff I'm completely different now. I'm a new creation. I'm a totally different person. I used to, you know, steal. Now I don't. You have all the right to judge those who do steal or take the names, you know, the Lord's name in vain or whatever, because you're not doing that no more. You're a new person. You have repented and you can judge other people uh, for doing something that's wrong and encourage them to repent as well. That's what really the gospel is all about. That's what really the word of God is all about. So uh, verse 18 a good tree can't produce evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree produce good fruit. Again, this is a whole idea of the one plant is one. A good tree produces good fruit. A corrupt tree produces corrupt fruit. You cannot have a, a tree that produces half corrupt and half good. It reminds me of what I said before about if you are grafted into the vine, excuse me, if you're, if you're grafted into the vine of the Lord, Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you're grafted into the vine, you are one with that vine. You become the part of that vine, which is Jewish. Okay, it is. It's Jewish. You become Jewish as you become part of that vine, the Jewish vine. So verse 18, a good fruit, uh, excuse me, a good tree cannot produce evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't grow good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so this is verse 21. Verse 21, verse 22, and verse 23, some of the most important verses in the scriptures that you could ever read. And this, these verses are some of the most overlooked, ignored verses in Christendom, in the church today. Okay? I don't think I've ever heard this preached from the, from the pulpit. I don't think I've ever heard this preached. Have you? Okay? Now listen. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Okay? Because you see, a lot of people today, they say, well, how do you get saved? Well, you got to you got to come to Jesus. You got to confess him as Lord. And, you know, you got to you got to ask him in your heart and, and, and then you're saved. You got to you got to come to Jesus and confess him as as Lord. You got to have faith in him. He will never cast you out and you get saved, okay? You know, you got to profess him as Lord. Well, Jesus said very clearly here, not everyone, not and OT, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, not everyone who professes Jesus as Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does, highlight that word in your mind, does. If you got a Bible in front of you, highlight that word in the Bible, does. He who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So in other, in other words, you, you can come to Jesus. I mean, it takes a certain degree of faith to do that. You can come to Jesus, you profess him as Lord, but he says not everyone who does that will enter the kingdom of, of heaven, but you got to do the will of my Father who is in heaven. I know a lot of people say, what's the will of, what's the, will of the Father is to believe in Jesus. 
Do you know what that means? Do you actually know what that means? Do you know what the, do you know back 2000 years ago what it meant to actually believe in a, in a rabbi? Because you, again, you got to look at the context here. Jesus was a rabbi. What does it mean to believe in a rabbi? Ask any Jewish person, practicing Jew, especially the Orthodox pra practicing Jews today. What does it mean to believe in your rabbi? It means to hang on his every word. It means to uh, do what he says. You can't, you, you can't say, I believe in my rabbi, if you go against what he says. You got to do. It's not just about grace and love and faith. It's doing, doing the will of, uh, of the Father. Verse 22, many, again, when the Lord says many, I believe it is many. He means many. When he said many, he means many. Many will tell me in that day, Lord, Lord, professing him to be Lord. I mean, they, they will come to him, come to Jesus, okay? Profess him to be Lord. Didn't we prophesy in your name? Wow, that takes a lot of faith to prophesy, to hear the word, of, to hear God speaking to you and relay that message to prophesy. And in your name, cast out demons. So we cast out evil spirits. We exercise people. In your name, we got power, we, we, we come to you, we profess you as Lord, we prophesy. And in your name, do many mighty works. Then I will tell them, says Jesus. Then I will tell them. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. Okay. So, he will cast out people who come to him if they work iniquity. He will cast out people who come to him. I don't care. It doesn't matter how many times they profess him to be Lord. It doesn't matter how much faith they have. It doesn't matter how many wonderful works they do and how much, if they have a TV ministry or not a TV ministry or whatever the case may be. It doesn't matter how much you prophesy, cast out evil spirits, do many, many works in the name of Jesus. If you are a worker of iniquity, meaning if you transgress the law of God, if you go against the law of God, he will cast you out. Out. Okay? That's what it says. That's what it says. That's the words of Jesus himself. Okay? We're not talking about the words of Paul here or the words of uh, some preacher on TV or some church father. We're talking about the words of the Lord himself, the words in red. Verse 24, everyone therefore who hears these words of mine and does them, oh, does them. Here we go again. A lot of people say, well, it's not by works, it's by grace alone. It's not by works, it's by faith. They, they quote Paul, they, they take one little verse of Paul here and they, they, they take it out of the scripture and make it go against everything else that Jesus said. Verse 24, Jesus said, everyone therefore, therefore, okay, he's, wrap, he's wrapping it up. Everyone therefore who hears the wor these words of mine and does them. I will liken to a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it didn't fall, for it was founded on the rock. Sounds pretty safe to me, doesn't it? Verse 26, everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't what? Do. Do. Everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the floods came, the winds blow and beat on the house, and it fell. And great was its fall. The house destroyed. Doesn't sound like salvation to me, does it? Verse 28, when Jesus had finished these sayings, the multitudes were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them with authority and not like the scribes. Awesome. 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 So you can go away with the rest of your day, the rest of your night, the rest of your morning, the rest of your afternoon. Think, think about these things. 
Think about these things. Let's just quickly recap here. We're talking about, Jesus said don't judge, but he's not talking about absolutely universally in, 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 in a very absolute universal sense not to judge at all at anything. It's, it's, it's insane to think that. It's impossible. No, he, his point was just don't be hypocritical. He's talking to the hypocrites. Um, verse 7, pray. You know, keep praying, keep on seeking, keep on, uh, keep on seeking the Lord. Verse 13 and 14, this is something I said, you need to really meditate upon this. Enter in the narrow gate. Few there be that find it. Wide and broad and many are on the road to destruction. Verse 15, talking about how Jesus commands us to judge. False prophets, wolves in sheep's clothing, those who bear bad fruit. Evil fruit, yep, it's Jesus' commandment to judge. If you want to be a good Christian, you have to judge. And the one of the most powerful verses in all of Scripture, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, verse 21, verse 22, and verse 23, not everyone who comes to me professes me to be Lord and who has faith to do Jesus never denied that they had such great faith that they can hear from God and, and relay that message to other people and prophesy. He never denied it. He didn't say, oh no, you didn't really prophesy. He didn't deny that they actually performed exorcisms and cast out evil spirits, that they had great faith and power to do that. He didn't deny that. He didn't say, wait a second, you're lying to me. No, you didn't do that. You didn't have that kind of faith. He didn't deny that. He didn't deny that they did mighty works in his name, in the name of Jesus. He didn't deny that. What he said was, he said, I will tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. I didn't say this earlier, but the word iniquity in the Greek is anomia. Ah, the negative meaning no uh, void of nomia or nomas. Law or Torah as in, in, in the Jewish mind. So basically what Yeshua was saying, what Jesus was saying, was he will tell these people. What people? The people who were lawless. The people who were workers of iniquity. People who didn't live according to Torah. To paraphrase what he said so you understand it a little bit more. He said, I will tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who live like there's no law. Okay? He's talking to Christians here, okay? He's talking to Christians. Obviously, they come to him, they profess him to be Lord. They've done these great and mighty miracles and works in his name and done all these great, great things in his name. He says, I will tell them. I never knew you. Depart from iniquity, you who live without the law of God. Of course, he's talking about the law of God. He's not talking about the law of man. Well, everybody knows the law of man is a corrupt law. Jesus doesn't teach us to live perfectly according to the law of man. Man is, uh, you know, we got the corruption of men, and the, in the corruption of men is in the is in men's law. We got to go back to God's law. And that's what Yeshua is all about. God's law. We talked about that earlier in chapter five. And so then he just reiterates it by saying, you know, that everyone who hears these words and does them, so a wise man, his house will stand strong. Those who hear my words and does not do them, oh, uh, it's not by works, it's by grace only, it's by faith, is like a man who is foolish. Foolish, okay? Think about this. Grace only, faith only people, foolish. Because they hear, but they don't do. Their house, it says, will fall with a great fall. Again, that does not sound like great salvation to me. Um, and ends off by the multitudes being amazed at the way he spoke. So may God give you enlightenment and, and God give you great understanding. God show you great and mighty things through what we just spoke of uh, in this video earlier on. So, uh, yeah, God broaden your, your understanding and bless you mightily. Think about his word. Meditate upon his word day and night. Thanks for watching.